Hi guys, Roxanne here from Tiny Home Living. Yes, the lighting still screwed up on my camera. Anyway, um, today we are going to be doing a little bit of restoration on an antique cast iron waffle maker that I got. I've been wanting one for a long time and of course now with the wood stove in the new tiny house I have been wanting one of these for a long time and so we're I got one we picked it up in Calgary when we went to visit our son and we're gonna try um, getting some of the flaking and and rust and some of the junk off of it today so um, don't forget to like and subscribe hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends let's get started so this is the cast iron um, waffle iron that I got. I'm not sure if these are original handles or not. Um, not too sure how old this thing is. It's an Anderson one. Um, I guess I'm saying that right. Anderson. Um, and I'm not sure. I haven't done too much research on the numbers and everything. But basically and it's the heart shaped waffles too. Which... I'm kind of excited about and I just noticed that the um, different things had points on them instead of flat surfaces like a lot of waffle makers so this reminds me of a gothic window so basically you put the um, mix in there you do that side and then this is sort of a ball and it turns and then you lay it down and do the other side so this sits, you can sit this on the stove or you can sit it right over the, um, where the fire is, where we can take the rings out on the stove. So, uh, this part, the waffle part, isn't actually too bad, but I do want to clean it up and re-season it just so I know it's clean for myself. Um, the part that really needs to be done, and I already flaked a bunch of this stuff off, but this is quite loose. It almost looks like it's been spray painted. Um, but I'm sure it's just old seasoning and then there's quite a bit of rust too. Of course this would be the part they would wash the most often. If the stuff doesn't stick to that then there's not really that much washing to do. But this probably, this is the spillover so this would probably get washed a lot more. And of course um, getting in these little spots and grooves will be the difficult part. Now we have a Dremel set that's got uh, quite a bit of accessories to go with it and I also got one of these sets that has all of these different little bits and I think the wire brushes are the ones that we're going to these ones are metal and this one here that we're going to start with is um, just more like a stiff brush so I think we're going to try that first and if we have to we'll use the metal one to clean this thing up especially in the grooves but you can see how many different um, little pieces of sanding, fixtures, cutting, and drills this has. So I think we'll be able to do this with this Dremel. So you can see that wore down the wires on this little brush. We have one more, so I'm going to switch to the new one. And um, it's getting, it's quite smooth here. There's still quite a bit of build up here. So hopefully I'll, with the second one, I'll be able to get most of that off. So this is pretty smooth now. I get, once I get three, um, layers of seasoning on there. Now I'm going to switch to this little brush. 
because I think I'm going to do some of this side. So because it's curved the other way, I'll use this little brush to get uh, some of that done. Okay, I'm going to say right now, <laughs> don't do this at home. <laughs> we should not have done this inside. I actually have, I'll show you what, I'm just trying to clean this mess up, but you can see the little bristles from those wire brushes everywhere. I'm cleaning the stove off. They're on the counter, of course, and um, they're actually sticking in the front of my t-shirt and poking through to my skin. This was not such a good idea. So, I hope I don't have to throw this t-shirt away because it's my chicken t-shirt. One of my chicken t-shirts. Anyway, should have... I'm always so impatient and of course stuck inside because of the weather. Um, we had a high of like minus 20 today Celsius. So I wanted to do this. I'm dying to use this cast iron waffle maker, but um, not a good idea. My eyes <laughs> are full of dust and I would not do this again inside. So uh, Chris is going to use the angle grinder a brush to, just to, to clean the inside up where um, you actually put the waffle mix. It, it I cleaned up this side. Looks pretty good. He's just going to brush this a bit. But it's looking pretty good, I think. The, the only other way to do this, to do a real full restoration, is a lye bath and all this stuff that I see people talking about online. And I've never done it before and I'm too impatient. <laughs> so if I really have to do that, I will. But for now, I'm just going to try and season this with three coats of grapeseed oil and so I can get going and try it. Now I can't put this in the oven because of the wooden handle. So what I'm going to do, I got this metal plate. I think at PB Mart, there's another one of those metal slivers. Um, and I'm going to heat it up on here rather than just on the grate. So I'm going to heat them up one by one and um, do both sides with the grapeseed oil. So I'm going to use this silicone brush because on the waffle side, It'll um, get the oil into all the grooves, which of course you want. It won't hurt to get oil on that metal thing either. It'll just end up with a coating on there. I can still see a little bit of the black on this. But, like I said, too impatient. I want to use this thing, so I want to get three coats of oil on it. Now, Kent Rollins says to bake it at uh, 350 degrees three times with the oil on it, but I can't do that because of the metal handles. So, I will just do it on the stove top. I've got too much oil on that side. That's the trick is not getting too much oil on it because then it gets gummy. So I've got the oil all in the Assist and on the edge. So I'm just going to heat this up now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat these individually and then I'm going to put it together and put it on the heat. Ouch! I was a little too close. That's the one thing too. Um, I've seen them with really long handles and I can see why people uh, go to the trouble to make new handles or get reproduction handles that are much longer. Because I've seen them, they're like, I don't know, 8 or 10 inches long. So I will get my handy dandy. I haven't meant to do that again. I'm always burning myself. The nice thing too is that little knob part fits in that wedge or the groove so this fits flat down onto the uh, metal thing to heat it even better. 
I guess the first few times I will try using a little bit of oil in the griddle the f and see how it turns out. Uh, I may have to throw the first one out because it might have black stuff still in there. I'm not too sure. Never done this before, so it's all a learning experience for me. I was looking out the door at Sadie and I looked back and the handle was on fire. Yikes. It's uh, minus 25 Celsius, so we have to keep an eye on her when she goes outside. So yeah, I might just look into some longer handles for this thing. Holy moly. Now I'm just going to try and wipe some of the excess oil off, if I can do that without burning myself. Holy smokes. Um, and heat. Pretty dangerous. Because that's what you want, is you just want it to be shiny like that. You don't, uh, it'll go gummy if you have See if I can do this without burning myself. Holy smokes. Get some of the excess off. Now I'm just going to brush the oil, the heart parts, because there's still so much oil in there. So, what I'm trying to do is get the excess out. I don't know what that is. Um, and continue to heat it with less oil in there. I'm going to do this three times. And, um, hopefully that'll keep it from getting gummy because it's too much oil will make it gummy. Your frying pan or anything else. Was my potato cleaning brush and I think it's burning that too. This metal plate is actually just the right size to put this ring on too. So what I did was I put the oil on it and then I wiped it off with a paper towel so hopefully there's not excess oil on there. So I've got the third piece done here. You can see how it's still smoking, but it's taken on that sort of bronze color. So I'm going to let all this cool while I make supper and then put another coat on later on. So I've got the base done. You can see how this is sort of taking on that bronze color from the seasoning, and this one is still quite silver. So um, I think I'm probably going to let these cool down and do another coat. Uh, but I think I'm going to try this the first time actually making waffles on the wood stove. I don't think I want to take the chance of getting stuff. Well, this is supposed to catch the spillover, so I'm not sure if I want to try it on this stove or not. <laughs> 